Hey guys, Amanda here at Bare Bones Living, and today I'm going to be making a batch of my honey oat soap. Um, I have been making soap for a little over a year now. Um, I decided to start making my own soap um, because I have sensitive skin and my family has sensitive skin, um, and instead of buying a bunch of commercial brand soaps that are supposed to be for sensitive skin and looking at the ingredients and not really knowing what any of that was, um, I decided I would start making it myself. Uh, so it kind of became a hobby of mine for my family to better our product consumption. Um, it was kind of fun because I got to make whatever scents that I wanted and I knew everything that was going into it. Um, but each time I make a batch, there's like 16 of them, and obviously I didn't need 16 at one time for my family, so then I decided I would sell the extras. And so I have a shop on Etsy, and I have a local shop as well on something called Spots on the Fox, and that's like a Chicagoland Etsy for home businesses um, and I sell my soaps and lip balms and vanilla and things like that on there as well. Um, however, I don't really get a whole lot of orders for any of my homemade products during the summer months, which is fine because I'm always usually busy in the garden myself, so I kind of get really lax on product making in the spring and summer because I'm so focused on what's going on in my garden. Um, but I also usually have like enough that any little orders that I get, I have enough backup to fill. However, I just got an order yesterday for my honey oat soap, which I just used the last bar in my kids' bathroom. So <laughs> I decided that now would be a good time just to make a whole nother batch. Uh, and really, hopefully, this has been on my to-do list because I know that I'm going to start getting orders in the fall. Now's a good time to start making these things. Um, today I'm making a hot process soap. That's all I've really made in the past. And basically what that means is that I use heat to speed up the soap making process so that when those bars harden, which is usually within a couple of hours, they're ready to use. So I've explained to you guys before that I am not much of a planner. <laughs> um, so this instant use soap is usually the best option for me because I don't plan ahead and I can make a whole batch and I, if my family runs out of it, I have some ready immediately to use or like this case, I need some to sell immediately. Um, it makes more of a rustic looking soap um, and by that I just mean it's not super crisp clean lines. It's a little harder to form the nice crisp bars with this hot process soap. Um, doesn't bother me for our personal use but some people don't like the appearance of it. Um, but that's that's what I advertise and that's what I've been selling. Um, cold process soap takes about a month to cure. I would like to get into that, but I just haven't had the opportunity to make it enough ahead of time in order to sell. Um, but today I'm going to be making a batch of my hot process honey oat soap and I thought I would bring you guys along with me. So making soap is not very difficult. Um, I know I was really intimidated at first myself making it um, because true soap you need to use lye and in order to mix lye it is a chemical reaction. It can be very scary. It heats up to a very very high temperature. You should not have children in the area. Um, use precautions. I have long sleeves on that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm, I have 
rubber gloves that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be wearing goggles in case of any splashes. And that's actually the first thing that I'm going to do is mix the lye so that it can cool. Like I said, it's going to heat up to a very, very high temperature. Um, and it's gonna start out cloudy and it takes some time for it to come down in temperature. It can get up close to 200 degrees and we want it more closer to 100 degrees, 110 degrees and it to be clear uh, when we actually use it. So I'm actually going to bring it outside and lie if you're not familiar is this sodium hydroxide. Um, and all I do is I have 12.1 ounces of water and then in another glass I have 4.8 ounces of the granular lye and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the lye granules into the water and mix it up and that you'll I'll bring you guys outside with me so you can see the reaction that it has. So again, i am got my gloves on, my long sleeves, I'm wearing goggles, I have my water here and my lye here, and I'm just going to be pouring the lye into my cup of water and you'll see the reaction that it starts to make. You don't wanna make big splashes into this. And then I'm just going to mix it up. And you can see that it's very cloudy. You don't want to breathe the fumes coming from here. I'm not sure if you can see that there's steam actually rising. And just for fun, we can take the temperature of this and it's 172 right now. So quite, quite warm. So I'm just going to let this sit and cool and I'll show you it when I'm ready to use it. So then for the rest of this recipe, I'm going to be cooking it here in this crock pot. This is just a crock pot that I picked up at Salvation Army for a couple bucks. I only use this for making my soap. Um, and I only use this spatula for making soap. So here I have 16 ounces of organic coconut oil. And I'm going to be putting this into my little crock pot and melting it. And then I'm going to be adding some other oils to this as well. So I'll just turn this on low and melt down this coconut oil. So my coconut oil has now melted and to that I'm going to be adding another 16 ounces of organic olive oil so that that can start heating up. I actually turned the crock pot up too high to get the coconut oil melted and it is still on high. And then once this coconut oil warms, or the olive oil that I just added warms up, I'll turn it down to low. Also to this mixture, I'm gonna add a half of a tablespoon 
of sweet almond oil. as well as half of a tablespoon of rosehip oil. And those both just help with moisture, increasing the skin moisture benefits of the soap. So these are gonna warm up to 120 degrees, and then I'll turn it to low before I add the lye. So now I have all my oils in my crock pot melted. The coconut oil, olive oil, almond oil, and rosehip oil. I also added a half of a tablespoon of raw organic honey to this, and it's about 125 to 130 degrees. My crock pot is now on low. And then this is the lye that I mixed outside. I'm gonna keep it outside just to be safe that no one throws it out or knocks into it or anything like that. But it's much clearer now. It's about 80 degrees now, much safer. And I'm going to be adding this lye into the crock pot. And then I'm going to be mixing it all up with this immersion blender. I just got a cheap immersion blender just for making soap. And I'm gonna mix that up until it comes to a trace. And I have my gloves back on, I have my goggles back on, my kids are in the back. Like, this is still a, You know, this is still lye that I have here, so I don't want them anywhere around. And when I put that in, it immediately changes color. Now, let's see if I can show this to you guys. So it's become like this opaque color. And then I'm going to start blending it until it comes to a trace. So then you'll see that this looks much different now and you'll know that it's reached trace when it gets to this thicker like pudding like substance. It becomes more opaque and when I lift it you can see it tints. So this is trace. We've reached trace. So then I'm just going to keep cooking this on low. I'm going to cover it and cook it for another 30 to 45 minutes, checking it every 15 minutes or so until it's bubbling and the starts to collapse. In the meantime, while this is cooking, I'm going to mix together my additives that I'm going to be putting in here. Once this soap is completed, I'm going to be adding essential oils and uh, ground up rolled oats to the soap for scent and for texture. Um, so I'll be using eucalyptus oil and lemon oil. And I'm gonna be using a half an ounce of each of these essential oils. So this is my lemon oil. So I'm just gonna measure up a half an ounce of this on my little digital scale here. And you wanna do this at the end of your soap making process so that the scents don't get cooked away. And this is eucalyptus. There we go one ounce of essential oils that I can add 
right before I put these into put the soap into molds. So my last additive that I have is a tablespoon of organic rolled oats that I'm going to be processing up. I'm going to grind them up in this little magic bullet and then I'll be dispersing it through this whole thing of soap to kind of give it some texture. So I just ground it up into like a fine grind and I'll be adding this at the same time that I'm adding my essential oils right before I put it all into a mold. So now this has been cooking for over 30 minutes and you can see that it's all bubbly and then this side over here has collapsed in. So we are ready to mold this up after I put in my essential oils and the oats and mix that up. So that's actually what I'm going to do now. I'm going to add in the oats. and my essential oils and then I'm going to mix this up and I'm going to work quickly now Oops. to get these into their molds to start hardening up. You just want to really try to distribute those oats and the essential oil. So that all the bars will have all those components. And then really it's just kind of like a dumping action to try to get it all in there. And I prefer to use these molds than like a big square mold and try to cut them. I tried those big square molds before and I tried to cut them and they were all sorts of wonky. <laughs> so even though these aren't, uh, these are not perfect by any means. They're also not uniform and they look, like I said, quite rustic. I like the look of these a lot better than the blocks that I was and the different shapes and sizes and drastic differences in weight. Trying to do like a big rectangle and cut it into bars. That just was not my strong suit. So I just try to get it all in the corners. And then try to smooth it all out as much as possible.
So that batch yielded me 14 bars. And they are looking awesome. Absolutely not perfect by any means, but they are excellent soap. Like I said, it made 14 bars. I already sent off the one order. And I have another order that I'm filling tomorrow with seven more of these that I have to get labels on. And I'm very happy with how they turned out. So yeah, that's just one of the products that I make is this honey oat soap. Um, it's one of the favorite products of mine that I make. Um, I feel comfortable using it on everyone in my family. Um, sensitive skin, things like that. I think it's really beneficial knowing what's in your products. Um, it's really easy to make. And it's really good soap. Um, so like I said, I have half of this going out tomorrow, but if you're interested, please let me know. Uh, hopefully this gave you uh, maybe an idea of something you can make for your family. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed, please subscribe because that really helps my channel and it'll keep you alerted as to when I make more videos. I am going to be making a calendula soap at some point. And then like I had mentioned, I am going to be making soap, cold process soaps as well. So keep an eye out for those. And like I said, those are just take like a month or more to cure. So it's something that's kind of still on my back burner, but hopefully I have that coming soon. Uh, but I hope you guys liked this video and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you guys for stopping by today and joining in on our journey here at Bourbon's Living. We'll catch you on the next one.